Hi and welcome to our today demo which is about ONAP and Panda introduction. As we learned during the course, ONAP is a, is a big software, is an orchestration platform mainly designed for service providers which includes those different frameworks like the design framework, runtime framework and also the closed loop frameworks. And Panda, which is covered in the further sections of this course, is a big data analysis platform mainly designed for, for networking. In the new releases of the ONAP, it includes also the Panda. So Panda is becoming a part of the ONAP. So ONAP as a big orchestration platform also includes Panda as a, as a tool, as a platform for, for big data analysis of the, of the networking. However, Panda can be also deployed as a standalone platform for doing the big data analysis. So it doesn't really need to be deployed along with ONAP, but deploying it with ONAP, it provides uh, further integration with ONAP and data which is being created and generated by ONAP, and it can be fed into the Panda automatically. But with Panda, whenever you have you install the Panda in standalone, or even if you have it with ONAP, still you will be able to feed some more data inside the panda and doing some uh, analysis work on those data which you are feeding into. One thing that we should remember is that ONAP and panda they are very big softwares they are they consist of many different components and they have a very complex installation methods. For proper operation they require huge amount of resources of compute power memory and storage and also requires a virtualization platform to, to run these two softwares. So normally you can, we can deploy ONAP or Panda on OpenStack or Kubernetes, and also they have uh, some complex way of the installation on the bare metal hardware. But the way that ONAP is currently recommending is to build a Kubernetes environment on top of OpenStack and use that environment for installation of the ONAP. And as I said, in the newer versions of the ONAP, there is an option to have the Panda also get installed along with ONAP and it also does the, uh, the, the required integration between the ONAP and Panda during the installation. So since these two pieces of software, they are, they are really huge, uh, we will be just reviewing the, the installation methods and we will get familiar with, with the installers of the, of the ONAP. We will look at the installer options and we'll do also some demonstration of the installation. But as I said, since it requires huge amount of resources, unfortunately, it becomes very complex to cover this in this introduction course. To make a fully working ONAP or Panda deployment and demo, it requires few hours of implementation and installation and integration, which is a complex process, and we will not be able to cover that into this introduction course. So for our demo today, we are going to use our Kubernetes environment, which we set up uh, previously. We have the Kubernetes on-prem Kubernetes environment, uh, we have the Juju console, we have a mass server, and we have a Juju controller, which we will not be doing actually any work with these. And we will go and get familiar with, with all app installation methods. We will review the different installation ways. Uh, we will also look at the Panda installation method as well. And we will start downloading and getting familiar with, with the all app installer. We will find out how we can change the installer options. Uh, what, what are the options and how we can enable the installation of the Panda along with ONAP. And we will do also a demonstration of the installation uh, of ONAP along with Panda over the Kubernetes, but we will not be able to do complete this installation due to the lack of the resources which we have. All right, so let's have a look now on the ONAP website and we start from there. All right, so let's start. We'll go to onap.org which is the website of the ONAP and now from here so here actually we have the Casablanca uh, release and we will jump directly to the get the code and this leads us to this read the doc uh, website of, of ONAP and so this information the release information of the Casablanca it will show and uh, let's start with, uh, with the installation. Uh, so installation, uh, 
uh, ONAP includes uh, a piece of software which is called ONAP Operation Manager OOM, which can be used for deploying your ONAP over on top of the o Kubernetes. Uh, we will be using uh, this OOM, which is which is a pretty s simple uh, installation. Now, if we use the the OOM uh, information, so uh, using OOM, OOM requires Kubernetes, Helm, kubectl, and Docker, and that's all is required. Uh, for a very basic installation, I think it requires, it, it has been validated with this 14 virtual machine and 16 GB of memory, but uh, I think this is not very practical if you are planning to do a real test with, with the own app. This might be good for uh, testing the installers that if they are working fine, but if you want to do any uh, real test of the, you know, getting getting a, a touch with, with own app, this is very very small deployment uh, the installation also is supported using other methods like you can use uh, heat openstack heat so if you have openstack setup you can use the openstack heat for deployment of the own app but you need you need to have your openstack already set up and you know with, with the basic uh, openstack com components and also you need the heat as a separate component on your OpenStack. And using this, uh, there is a file, there is a heat file which you can download and you can use this heat template file for deployment of the own app on top of the OpenStack. Uh, also, there are uh, other methods like setting up each individual components of own app, which also it becomes a very complex way because it has many, many different components and you need to set up each of them manually separately and do the integration between, between each component and the other components as well. And the installation method, which are listed here, uh, it, it also includes uh, a creation of the Kubernetes, which is explained in this guide here. Uh, the OM Cloud Setup Guide, which here it specifies that to set up the own app, actually, you need 224 gigabytes of RAM and you need 112 CPU cores and 106 gigabytes of, of the hard drive. And this tutorial here, it explains uh, how to do the installation of, of the Rancher on top of the uh, OpenStack in order to use this platform to create the Kubernetes and deploy own app on top of the, open, uh, on top of the Kubernetes. So this one here actually is a is a good guide which helps you to uh, to launch Rancher on top of the OpenStack. But as a prerequisite, you need the OpenStack running on your system, uh, fully set up with different flavors set up, the the storage and everything. And with this uh, with this guide, you will be able to start creating your Rancher environment. So Rancher is, uh, is another free software which can help you to run and create clusters of the old Kubernetes or other uh, big software tools. So here uh, it is creating the, the Rancher so the Rancher virtual machine on top of the OpenStack with some configuration here. And once the Rancher is being is, is deployed, after that it will be doing some installation of the Kubernetes. And let's have a look more. Uh, creating key pairs and stuff and also you need to we need to set up an FS share between the multi between the nodes of the of the Kubernetes so the master node inside the Kubernetes uh, will be serving an F NFS share between all of the other machines so this is one of the ways that they are going to share the data between each other uh, so there are some uh, piece of code that that helps you for creating NFS share on the master and also on the slave node, the other, uh, the other Kubernetes worker nodes uh, in the cluster to start pointing and using this NFS share which has been created inside, uh, inside the Kubernetes master. And once you set up the Rancher, as you see, uh, some screenshots are here, you will be using uh, the Rancher to create your Kubernetes environment. So you will have OpenStack, you create a Rancher on top of the OpenStack and you will use that Rancher to create a Kubernetes environment on top of your OpenStack environment. 
one of the benefits of running Kubernetes on top of the OpenStack is that um, I think Kubernetes also integrates with uh, with OpenStack. So some of the you know those features which are uh, not really available uh, with with normally with the on-prem uh, environments of the Kubernetes like uh, like load balancers and allocating you know those service IPs of the load balancer so that might be able to uh, cover using using OpenStack and Rancher will do uh, your setup of the Kubernetes on top of the on top of the OpenStack and you will be once the once the Kubernetes is up and running then you will be able to start doing deployment of the uh, of the own app on top of it so this guide here was just a guide for helping you to create a Kubernetes environment on top of the OpenStack. So once you have you are ready and you have your Kubernetes environment ready to go, then you need to start with the OM Quick Start Guide. This guide, which can help you to start creating and deploying the own app on top of the Kubernetes. So we will be using also this guide because we already have a Kubernetes environment. Our Kubernetes environment is not running on top of the OpenStack but it's a, just a standalone environment. It's not fully compatible with this implementation method, but uh, we will be using it just for demonstration of the, of the installation. So once again, this whole guide will tell us how to create a Kubernetes environment on top of the OpenStack and also how to install the, the own app using the OM on top of that OpenStack, on top of that Kubernetes environment, which we have already created. And as uh, we discovered, there are other ways for deploying of the own app, for example, using uh, heat, OpenStack heat, which own app comes with the, with the heat template, which can help us to create and spin up the own app on top of the OpenStack directly. And also there are other ways for setting up each individual component. And once we do this deployment, you will see that, you know, after the deployment, there, might, there will be around over 200 and something uh docker containers will be and, and kubernetes pod will be spin up and you will see how these components they are all forming this whole own app all together uh, also these other documentations uh, are very useful if you are if you're interested to read more about the uh, the own app for example the service design uh, these are all uh hooking into another uh into the confluence of the of the own app you know, for example, here you can see how we can get access to, you know, the ONAP portal. So ONAP portal is one of the uh, services or containers within the within the ONAP, which is only serving uh, a dedicated user interface for the user to interact with, with the ONAP. And from here, you will be able to access to, for example, to the design framework, you know, in the design framework, you know, you will be able to find out how to create tenants or, you know how the the region works and you know, all of this stuff which we which we discovered and reviewed during the course are also available here in some in some places of the documentation and within the confluence you will be able to find some interesting implementation guide and also information uh, which might be a, might be very helpful for example you know here we got some you know running the demo on app demos it would help you to understand uh, how to access the portal, for example, and this kind of stuff. Uh, also, there are some, uh, you know, the overall deployment architecture. This also shows how actually the own app works. So it might be a little bit scary when you look at the drawings of uh, how the different components of the, of the own app uh, are all working together and, you know, the, all the different components of the own app. But remember, own app is a massive platform for for orchestration so it, it has so many con connectors and drivers to talk to different components like networking and virtualization and in order to create your um, universal cp or edge computing or service chaining in the edge or within the core of the service providers that's why all of these components are all required and they all talk to each other so in different deployment you don't need to deploy all of these components and features you can enable and disable each of these uh, you might not need to have some of the features enabled so based on the requirement you can enable or disable 
uh, the features and components of the own app. We will be look at these uh, when we download and start doing deployment of the own app. Also, this confluence give us some more information about the other projects uh, within the own app. So, for example, if we go on the own app project and the approved project. Let's say the data collection analytics and event project. So here in the DCAE documentation, uh, here we go. There is a section for integrating the Panda. Um, to provide the Panda platform uh, as a deployment option that delivers big data analytics as part of the DC. AE. So the Panda is being brought inside the own app for uh, for data analytics, uh, for, for big data analytics. And this all information shows that how the Panda is being brought in and how, how it works. So here also there is a presentation. Uh, and this presentation also should be able to give us some more information about the, uh, the Panda. So it Panda integrates and be offered as own app DCAE. Uh, one of the options for DCAE, uh, it's, it's still uh, own app comes with the uh, with its own uh, big data platform. Uh, so the Panda has option for big data processing for own app within the DCAE Gen two framework, providing an alternative to CDAP, which is the which is the other data analytics platform of the of the own app uh, so panda is a real big data platform which comes with the hadoop as well as into uh, as opposed to integrated developer focus like the red panda uh, so panda is already coming into the own app so if you have if you are setting up the own app we should be able to get the panda also integrated into that and we should be able to use that um, all right so let's have a look at the Panda also now. So if you go to panda.io, uh, this is the general website of the, of the Panda. So Panda also is a new project, so you not be able to find some information which you may be looking for. And from here, uh, we can just uh, jump into the, to the guide. And, and there are some implementation method also for Panda and so these implementation methods which are listed here these are all out of the own app so so you can do the the panda deployment using openstack heat or you can deploy it on the aws or you can deploy it also using the salt stack automation tool uh, so let's say for example on aws uh, here also it gives us some information how to uh, deploy the panda on the on the aws so there are multiple different uh, steps which needs to be done you know creating the you know mirror components and you know all the stuff which are listed here um, using heat using openstack heat there is a heat template from uh, from panda which you can use that on uh, on top of the OpenStack heat to create to create Panda on top of that and there are some guides also here for creating the image files and doing the implementation on top of the heat so either you can do deployment of Panda using uh, using OpenStack or AWS or we can just use the own app for deployment of the Panda which I think is easier to use own app uh, for doing that deployment also to remind you, uh, Panda. If you haven't read about the Panda, that's already covered in the uh, in the data analytics section of this course. Uh, and Panda is a big data analytics for for networking. So it includes a full fledged uh, big data components like Apache, Kafka, Hadoop, and you can create big data applications and tools on top of it for doing the big data analysis on the on top of your big data on top of the networking information which is coming from your for example the BGP information or routing information or even uh, the movement of the MAC addresses or anything which you can or any other information which you feel that might be helpful for creating uh, for, for doing some big data analysis on top of it all right so let's start with 
with with own app installation we will use the om quick start guide uh, which we reached here and we already have the kubernetes environments available to us and we will be starting we will be using this guide for deployment of that so let's have a look at our kubernetes environment first uh, let me get a console here uh, if i do a kubectl cluster info this should show us some information about our open kubernetes cluster which is running so master uh, hipster all the services of kubernetes running and also i have the the proxy also running on a separate uh, console so we can use our browser to access to the our, to our kubernetes environment so i'm using this local host at port and i'm able to access to our kubernetes environment which is running on top of these uh, a master server and two uh, workers uh, so they, we don't have any specific configuration this is just a uh, bare installation of the kubernetes so that's what we currently have so our kubernetes is ready and let's start from here so for for de doing the deployment of the own app uh, our kubernetes environment is available and the first thing is to clone the om repository from the own upgrade uh, so let's do this work so okay so let's start with doing this git clone and it will create a folder for us called om here i put this command and we clone the om repository let it get downloaded wait for it okay so the repository has been uh, cloned uh, just remember this repository is only the uh, the own app uh, installers so the helm installer is not even the real files of the own app and if we go to this folder now the om and we got now the kubernetes two scars and different folders and we should go to the kubernetes folder which includes all of these other components of the of the own app uh so cd om or kubernetes now we are over there now we need to install the helm plugins re re required to deploy the own app casablanca release uh, first i need to make sure we have helm installed on our machine let me check yeah we have the helm so helm is helm is like a package manager for for kubernetes so same way that for example you use docker to pull images and install some some software on top of the docker containers inside on the kubernetes cluster we can use helm which is a package manager for the kubernetes to install different uh, charts inside the kubernetes so right now we are uh, we have our helm uh, installed on this machine and we will be using this helm which, which we are running actually version 2.2.13 so i need to let me use my file manager here and we need to copy the files from uh kubernetes helm plugins into a folder inside the local user dot helm so here should go to uh kubernetes helm plugins so we got the helm folder and the plugins which includes two plugins called deploy and on deploy and these two will become two different comments for us to to be used within the helm and these two they should be copied inside the local user so i should have a folder here called uh, dot helm and i need to copy these into that folder so if i issue this command here on the user directory now i have a helm and i have these plugins already copied so that 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 is already there it's already copied okay um now we need to customize the own app values.yaml file to suit the deployment you may want to selectively enable or disable the own app components so this is one of the configuration files the uh, the values.yaml so if we go back here 
we open this file actually inside in a, in a proper file manager uh, in a proper text editor that would be easier so in the OM uh, inside the Kubernetes we have inside the own app folder the values.yaml so inside this file there are different components which are enabled or disabled so these are all the own app components which we are which, which we have already studied and for example you know each of them and each of them have different configurations so for example appc which is which is the application controller so the, for example the appc or the application controller is requires OpenStack environment to be available to to spin up so appc requires OpenStack, and here you have to we have to provide the open stack information here the tenant name the username passport and stuff for in order to appc to be able to spin up itself on top of the open stack um, the other stuff like you know as you can see the clamp you know panda is also here and it's enable it says false now we will change this to true so this will tell to our uh to our om installer that hey i need panda to be installed as part of our uh panda as part of our own app deployment and the other components as we can see um there are all there the policy reboot uh service orchestrator so service orchestrator as we studied it's a runtime uh component of of the own app and this also requires the open stack so it runs on top of the open stack so you need to modify this information based on the open stack uh, platform which you have uh, unfortunately here we don't have that open stack environment and we are just running bare metal kubernetes uh, we will not be able to have the service orchestrator enabled uh, so this actually will fail during our installation I will not change it to false but you know I want to make sure that's already there and the other components are also all enabled so that's what uh, we needed so these are the values of the own app uh, let me save this file and now if you go to the to the other folders like you know let's say uh, the portal for example so portal also each component has its own values of the ammo file so these are the configuration for example for the portal so that's one of the uh, components of the portal port what port the portal should be listening on you know the the, the, the passwords and stuff like they are all uh, listed here you know what database in the MariaDB you know it has to work you know it will be uh, so our installer will create a MariaDB or MySQL database file called portal-db and this is how the, the the portal will know that how to use that and these are all preset passwords which are defined here for 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 doing this connection between these different components uh, other components also as well you will find uh, all of this stuff uh, being having a separate value dot uh, yaml file so for example this one the panda panda also has uh, has a different uh, requirements so the panda dcae uh, panda bootstrap this also has its own uh, value configuration file which requires to be modified so the panda when it comes up you know it, it, it requires one apache kafka nodes two data nodes you know what ntv server is going to use and other stuff so each of these values that uh, yaml file it needs to be modified based on what what you require and uh, requirements uh the yaml this is a helm file uh that specify what are the requirements for uh, uh for this package to be all right so let's start with uh creating our helm server here on this machine so helm server here will be helping us to create a local repository helm repository for our deployment and we will be creating a local repository after that and we will create this own app 
uh, installer chart installers within within uh, within this machine and will be served by this Helm server for to the Kubernetes environment. So let's start the Helm server now. Okay, so let's start the Helm server. Helm serve and and all right now it started it started on the on the local machine port number 8879 and we still can use the the console uh, let me still check if it is really running here and yes the helm the helm is running here okay so we got our our helm server running now just remember we have the helm server and, and helm clients running on the same machine if you remember uh, when I do the Helm version, we have the both Helm server and client running on the same machine. Uh, so we have the Helm server running on version 2.13. And now we need to uh, we need to add the, the repository. So Helm add this local repository. So this is a command for the Helm client. Okay, I have to run it with the sudo okay it's added to the repository if i say helm repo repository list um, we can see we have the local repository also added here to our helm client uh, okay so this we have already done now we are ready for doing for compiling the uh, our helm repository for creating the own app install installation uh, repository now before doing that we need to uh, the version, the version of our Helm, uh, we need to ensure that is correctly specified inside our uh, own app installations. Uh, so the, the version which we are running here is 2.13.1. Now, now this version should should match with the version which is specified in our own app uh, installation. So in the Kubernetes folder uh, own app in the charts.yaml file. Uh, so here we have a tiller version, which is actually the, uh, the version of our Helm client and Helm server. So it should be 2.13.1 matching with the version which we have here. Otherwise we will get some errors during the, during the deployment. So let me save this file and we should be ready to go with uh, running the make make all and make one up. I will run it separately here. Uh, let's do it with sudo make uh, make all. So this process will get uh, will take some time. Uh, we will wait for some time for it for it for it to get over. It may take around uh, between you know around thirty minutes to an hour. For, for it to get over. So let's wait for it to get over. All right, so now as we can see, the compiling uh, is completed now. Uh, no failures, okay. So this whole thing actually just created the package own up uh, 30.tgz. Let's see how big is this file. Uh, it's just main one megabyte file okay so the next is to do the make on app let's give it some time let it get over all right so now uh, this make also is completed no failures now if we do a helm search dash l this should show us all the repositories inside our helm uh, these are all the repositories so include also wordpress uh, let's see if, let's do a, let's do a filter up on app and yeah so local in the in the local repository own app version three Casablanca is already there open network automation platform so this is already created as we expected and now we are ready for 
the, the repo set up, the installation of the owner can be done with this single command. So helm deploy dev local slash own app dash dash namespace own app. So this will create a namespace called own app within our Kubernetes and we'll start deploying this whole big piece of software, the own app with all of its components, including Panda inside our Kubernetes environment. Uh, let's check in our Kubernetes. Let's make sure we don't have the own app uh, namespace. If I click on namespace, we log in again. Okay. So namespaces. So we have just the default namespaces of the Kubernetes. We don't have any own app. So now we are ready to go with the with the deployment. Helm deploy command and just do a little bit sudo there we go so this will take some time for deploying the the whole thing inside the kubernetes so it grabs all the requirements uh, and charts from from the repository which we have created and it start talking to the to the Kubernetes to create those, to create different, uh, create the deployment, creating pods, services, persistent storage, and all the other stuff. Let's give it some time now. All right, so now as we can see, most of the uh, the component has been deployed. We got few failures uh, here, which are uh, didn't get deployed. Now let's have a look at our Kubernetes and see how these items are being deployed. Okay, let's go back to our Kubernetes. Now here, if we go on, okay, so we are in the overview. Let's see if we got new, yeah, we got new namespace. We got the own app namespace. And within the own app namespace, now as you can see, the memory utilization is just going up because the hosts are being created, uh, the, the containers are being created and the deployment has, has already started and the number of deployments 120 deployments around 17 jobs and the pods also being being created 159 as of now and replica sets so this is how uh, own app is uh, being deployed we just need to give some time uh, but after all uh, within this environment it will not be really useful because this demo was to show you how how you can do the, the installation uh, but uh, if you have if you can use uh, a native cloud uh, Kubernetes like Kubernetes on Azure or AWS uh, or, or Google uh, that will be a straight uh, deployment without any problem uh, because you know we have in the lab we have only this Kubernetes on the bare metal, so it doesn't support all the features. Uh, so after some time, uh, we will see that the memory utilization will go above uh, above the hundred gigabytes. Uh, most of the containers will be created here, but it will not be uh, fully operational. Yeah, and just refresh the page, uh, the Kubernetes overview, and as we can see, our memory usage on our host has reached to around, around uh, 189 gigabytes. So this means that you know most of the uh, the containers of the own app uh, has been deployed and they are running. So this uh, demo was uh, all about very basic introduction for installation of the own app and uh, enabling Panda also for, for, the, for the installation along with the ONAP. But as I said earlier, the ONAP and Panda, they are very complex uh, platforms for automation and data analytics. Uh, it, we will not be able to cover uh, the full-fledged uh, demo of ONAP or Panda within the scope of this course. But uh, these are complex uh, softwares even uh, if you compare ONAP uh, or, or Panda, both you can compare them to, to OpenStack or Kubernetes. These are all complex softwares and require a very advanced type of uh, installers for, for having a clear installation. Uh, once we have the Panda installed, 
you know, we, we just need to start writing application and ingesting logs to the Panda in order to start uh, getting knowledge out of our out of our data. So this was our very basic demo about ONAP and Panda. If you have any question, please raise it in the forum or you can contact me directly. Thank you very much.